Where's my clicker? All right, welcome back. Uh, tonight we got two topics. We got four person four, four person positioning, uh, some mechanics, and then also we'll go we'll go out to the field. We'll do some stations with this so you can see it, and then we will do penalty enforcement to wrap up the night uh, as well. Penalty enforcement. This stuff for four person is pretty straightforward. It'll make a little bit of sense as we talk through it. Uh, but penalty enforcement will be confusing. I promise you that. Um, but we'll do our best to get through it. Um, if you have questions, ask the questions. Because the more questions you ask now, the better you'll understand it. And hopefully, the easier it'll be when we get get out there uh, for a game. Uh, training dates upcoming uh, tomorrow night, 6:30 to 9, same place. Uh, Thursday, 6.30 to 9, again, we'll be out here. And then Monday, 5.30, 11.30, we'll have practice games. We'll split you into two shifts, uh, so you won't work the entire night. Uh, but you will get games. Uh, you'll have essentially a supervisor that's there to help you get through the evening and help you out. And then hopefully by the end of the evening, you will feel comfortable and confident in what you're doing. And we'll be able to continue on uh, into the next week where we actually have, where games will be live um, to officiate and do a great job. All right, so we have four positions. They are referee, line judge, field judge, and back judge. Your first one is a referee. So their initial starting position is behind the quarterback, behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, we keep what is called a seven and seven yard box. So you're seven yards behind the quarterback and seven yards outside of the quarterback. Uh, and no matter where the quarterback runs as the play is going on, you need to kind of keep that distance to the quarterback. Um, the quarterback is your main responsibility if you're the referee. Uh, the referee, if you watch football on Saturdays and Sundays, is the one wearing the white hat. Um, we don't have hats that you would wear per se, um, but you would be out there essentially in that role. So some pre-snap keys, you're looking at the line of scrimmage, like I said, you're looking at the quarterback, um, you're keeping an eye out for anything that may tip off motion, that may tip off that um, a funky play may be coming. And then at the snap, like I said, quarterback, but also looking at the line of scrimmage. You're kind of getting that initial push, you're seeing that initial rush, seeing what the, what the, um, the defense is doing, what the offense is doing, and if, they're gonna make, if they make a quick contact, you can grab that foul. Um, but as kind of play progresses, you should shift your eyes to kind of follow that quarterback in the backfield. So here's our positioning. You can see our line of scrimmage, our offense is here in the red, and our defense is in green. Our referee, as I said, is our white hat um, behind the line of scrimmage with our quarterback right here. So after the snap, so the ball has been snapped. We're watching the initial rush for legal contact. So a lot of times what you will see, and we'll see here in the video, is a player coming through the line of scrimmage real quick and they'll use their hands to push someone aside or they'll try to bump them out the way to try to get them off their path to the quarterback. So you're watching that initial rush. After that initial rush has happened, you're gonna to start to focus your attention towards the quarterback and kind of the play going on around them. As they move, you're maintaining a seven and seven yard distance to them, seven yards behind, seven yards outside. Can someone tell me why we wanna keep distance from them? Exactly, stay out of the way of the quarterback, stay out of the way of the rushers. You will have to move. Some quarterbacks will stand still, but a lot of them will run around, especially in flag football. So make sure that you are, if they're going that way, you're going that way with them. If they're coming to you, you're going back this way with them. So keep that distance so you don't get caught up in their play. If the quarterback is threatened, one thing you're looking out for is a flag guard. So a lot of times the quarterback will be running around, someone will come to pull their flag and they'll slap their hand down like that. Keep an eye out for that. Or stick their arm and try to stiff arm. So you're looking for flag guarding um, a lot of times with the quarterback as they're, as they're running around back there. And last but not least, once the ball is thrown, we're yelling balls away. That indicates to our defense and our offense that they can stop blocking, that the ball is gone, the play is over, so we're keeping an eye out for that. Uh, but it also indicates that the ball has been a forward pass. So the ball is thrown forward, we're going to go balls away because we can only have one forward pass per down. Um, so that's indicating that we have a forward pass and the ball has been um, thrown away down the field. Uh, if the play ends behind the line of scrimmage, you'll pass the spots, the line judge, and move the ball spotters back. So our ball spotters look like this. Orange is for offense. Think orange O, offense. And red, or they, sorry, not red. Yellow is for the defense. So you would put them down with the yard in between, and we'll go over that here in a little bit. But uh, so we're, what we're saying is the line judge, and we'll talk about this here in a second, the line judge is always going to get your spot and be where we will put the ball and play on the next down. 
Um, so if the ball is behind the line of scrimmage and our referee should be keeping the distance to the quarterback, typically the quarterback has been sacked, you will grab that spot, the line judge will slide down to come see you, and then you'll give the line judge a spot, then you'll go get your pucks and move them back to where the line judge has gotten that spot from for you. So you're responsible essentially for the backfield um, for if you're the referee um, for when the play ends. Um, after the play ends, if there's no penalties, we're gonna move, the, we're gonna pick up our pucks, we're gonna move downfield, to where the line judge is, which is typically, which should be, and I will say should be, where the play is ended. Um, and if there's a penalty or penalties, find out what they are, signal them, ask the captain what they want to do. You'll go, so you'll march the penalty off, and they'll announce the penalty. So if we have, say, a pass interference, you would then you would signal pass interference on the defense, so pass interference, defense. You would then ask the captain, hey, blue captain, do you, want to, do you want to accept the penalty? Do you want to take the result of the, the play? Blue captains say we most likely will say we want to accept. Then you will go, you'll march off your, your yardage for that, and then you'll announce pass interference, defense, you know, there's all the plays, the first down, 40 the game, um, if that's what, that's what the play looks like. So the referee, as you, would, as you see on the you know, weekends if you're watching football, that's what they're doing. They're announcing the plays. You need to make sure you do that as well. Um, so, we have our first play. So as you can see, it's a play behind the line of scrimmage where the quarterback gets sacked. Our referee is the one watching that quarterback where everyone else is watching play going on downfield or at the line of scrimmage. So what happens is, is uh, the legendary Jonathan Rubin, he keeps his distance. He kind of gets caught up with the quarterback a little bit close, but as when the, he gets to the spot, line judge moves down, hands up the spot, then he runs up and gets the pucks to move back. Um, so that's, that's what we're talking about, where you're grabbing that spot behind the line of scrimmage um, for them. The horn is not for flag football, it was for soccer. Um, but what do we got here? What do you think? The referee obviously throws a flag. Uh, what do we see here? Nope. So remember, our referee is looking at our quarterback, but they're also watching the initial rush. Watch when they snap the ball. Watch the center. You'll see him right here. Watch him right there. See that arm, shove them out the way? That's what we're looking for. We're grabbing, we're helping out. We're gonna try to keep our eye out for that. Because as that guy's running by, he just pushes his arm out like that, pushes the guy out the way. Contact is not allowed in flag football. You may say that's minor, but that's the that's contact that flag football is looking to get rid of. Um, the incidental contact is where we kind of have some gray area, but contact like that where you can see he clearly throws his arm out to hit that guy out the way is what we're looking for. So our line judge, initial starting position is on the line of scrimmage. So line judge, line of scrimmage. Uh, our pre-snap keys, we're watching down the line of scrimmage, we're watching our linemen, uh, we're watching our wide receivers. Um, we're counting, that's another thing is we wanna make sure we're counting. We're counting flag belts as opposed to counting shirts. Why are we counting flag belts as opposed to counting people? Someone from the side of the room. There you go, bingo. We're looking to make sure everyone has a flag belt. Now ours, our rules are a little bit trickier. You can, you can play with pockets as long as you're not wearing a flag belt. In that situation, we need to be aware of that. But if someone's out of pockets, they should have a flag belt on, and that's something we're keeping an eye out for. Um, so making sure we're counting out, being aware of it, um, making sure that we have the correct number of people on the field at all times. And at the snap, we're watching our, we're watching our um, players in line of scrimmage. We're making sure everyone is coming through without, um, without incident, without that kind of contact. We're watching the play, but we're also kind of watching that, the receivers as they're moving um, downfield. We're not watching them as they get typically beyond five yards. We kind of have a five yard block in front of the line of scrimmage and behind the line of scrimmage. So we're watching kind of that 10 yard block around the line of scrimmage for contact um, and for our, our receivers. So as you can see here, again, this lovely image, our line judge is opposite of our referee, lined up on the line of scrimmage. So again, we're watching about six, seven yards down the sideline you're standing on. So you got your sideline, you're watching down. 
uh, we have, as you can see here, our back stretch is right here to hopefully, if something goes long towards your line of scrimmage, hopefully get over to kind of help you out there. We're essentially watching this, the scrimmage um, around us. Uh, watch contact over the middle, so watching our receivers, our, um, our offensive line, our defensive line in the middle of the field, and then watching our receivers that are on our line of the field. Um, if a player runs beyond the line of scrimmage or if the player catches a pass and then runs, you have flag guarding responsibilities in your area. So you're looking for, again, that receiver catching the ball, turning and swatting, um, or ducking that ball in front of themselves to protect their flags. The key part of flag football is the flags, and people are allowed the uninterrupted ability to go pull your flags uh, from you using your body. You can juke them, you can spin, all that stuff. You just can't use your arms uh, to protect your flags in any way. So the play is now ended. We've thrown the passes on downfield. They've run downfield, whatever that is. We're going to hold the, uh, hold the end of the run or the spot, okay, the spot where they've been deflagged or where the ball has hit the ground. We're looking and we're spotting off of where the ball is when, that, when they've been um, deflagged or they've run out of bounds. We're looking where the ball is because a lot of times you'll see people run like this in flag football. Why is that? To draw contact. Draw contact. What's the other reason? Gets you more yards. Gets you more yards and you can't swat it out of someone's hand uh, in flag football. The ball is an extension of the hand. So I can run like this and have no repercussion anywhere in regular football. It would be a fumble if someone smacks it. Someone hits it out of my hand, it's legal contact. So you're looking for this because this is essentially another couple feet that they may get from running with the ball like that. So we're looking for that to spot our ball um, from off of that. If you don't make that call, so say the ball has gone long, there's a long quick pass, long pass out of bounds, downfield and it's not in your area, the official who's closest should grab that spot and then will give it to you. So you will run, find out where that official is, you'll meet them, they will hand you the spot and then you will hand the spot to the referee. Um, unless you have a penalty that's enforcing, you would then uh, pass the end of the run to the field judge and report your penalty to the referee. So the play goes, if we have any sort of play, you have a foul, you need to go tell your referee, hey, I got um, a pass interference, the play is over. The field judge would come get that spot from you and then you would go tell the referee, hey, this is what I got, because we need to make sure we keep that spot um, either to decline it or for the enforcement, which we'll go about here in a little while. Um, clean up your sideline. So one thing we see a lot, and you'll see here in a second, is when players go out of bounds, we need to make sure that we follow them out of bounds. Because what happens if, if player is out of bounds, I mark my spot, and they're back there, someone throws a punch, whatever it is, someone pushes and nuts someone else, and I'm not looking, we have no idea what's going on. And there's no guarantee that someone else in the rest of the field is going to see what happened. So I'll get my spot, I'll turn and follow them, and then once as they're coming back to the field, I'll turn and give them give my spot. So we want to make sure we're keeping an eye on that. Our other officials, and you'll see here at the back judge, our other officials can come help. Our back judge should come over and kind of help us get everyone back in the field. We should all work to have that spot to be aware where the ball went out of bounds and also help get everyone back in the field of play, hopefully without issue. Because if we have nights where the game is heated, um, it could, that's a perfect opportunity for a flashpoint to where it can get out of hand, we can have someone get pushed, and now we've got to fight break out, and now we've got to handle ejections. The less you can eject people, the easier your life will be, and the better the game will be as well. So this is a situation where our line judge can also kind of take a peek as that quarterback coming toward the sidelines to see if they stayed in bounds. If you see they set down a bounds, you need to blow it quick to notify everyone the play is over. So blow it quick so that way you avoid the situation where they've thrown a pass, now you've blown it, the play, it's a little late, and now they're upset. So if you, see, if you can take a quick peek, see that they're still in bounds, leave it. But if they're out of bounds, make sure we blow that dead. And you can see here, Referee's got the spot, our line judge moves back, gets the spot from them, our referee then moves the puck up the field um, for that. Also, shout out to my boy wearing the Cam Newton Auburn jersey on the sideline. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's custom made too, that's the crazy part. That guy got a Cam Newton jersey. <laughs> So 
So you can see here, one piece here that, that this official does well is he lets the play go by him. And it's one thing to let the play go by you to an hour where you're burned, but if a situation like this where the ball is kind of coming there, takes a step back, turns, lets the play kind of go, and he follows up the field. So that's a situation you want to follow up because you get more view on what's going on. If I'm running side by side with them, my focus is on them, when a lot of the action that you're looking for is happening around the player. So if you slide, take a step back and follow them, you can see more of what's going on, the action in front of them and behind them in terms of illegal contact. Maybe you see that flag guard that you could miss if you're running side by side with them up the field. Um, it does provide you a different angle, gives you a little bit more space to see more of the play that's going on. And then, as you can see, after he blows the whistle, he moves to the field to go get the spot um, that he would then hand off to the uh, referee. So our field judge, initial starting position, is downfield about 10 yards, uh, typically, on the same side as the referee opposite the line judge. We're watching receivers that are coming off on your side of the scrimmage and that they're going deep. So a lot of times that short to intermediate range passing, mostly our short passing is the responsibility of our line judge, uh, but that intermediate range and then beyond on your side of the field is gonna be the responsibility of the field judge. Um, you're responsible for contact in the middle of the field and down your sideline. And remember, pass interference restrictions. So the offense, a pass interference restriction begins on the snap, where our defense begins when the ball is in the air. So again, you're watching about six, seven yards from the line of scrimmage to about 10 to 15 yards. Uh, depending on the team, you may have most of the game where it is within six to seven yards. Some games it will be longer because they just want to air it out. So you'll read your game, kind of figure out where you need to be and what you need to focus your attention on. Watch for contact over the middle as receivers. Watch for the, what, the pick route that you see a lot now in football. Uh, keep an eye out for that. And watch the receivers on your side of the field. And if a player catches a pass and then runs, and you have flag guarding, you have flag guarding responsibilities in your area. So keeping an eye out, like we saw with the line judge, allow them to kind of get with you, and then take a step back, and allow them to move downfield um, with it as well. If the play, after the play is over, uh, hold the end of the run, the spot where they were deflagged or where the ball hit the ground. Give it to the line judge. If you have a penalty that needs enforcing, make sure that line judge gets the spot. So if the, sp the play is ended and you have a penalty that you saw, say it was a flag guarding, we ended the play here. Don't just take off without anyone getting that from you. We have to make sure that someone is on that spot at all times. So that way we can, we can know where we are and if we have a situation where we need to go back and look at what that spot is, we don't we're not all like, oh, where was it? And we gotta go out there and guess. It looks a lot better if we hand it off to someone and then we go run um, to go let our referee know what we're doing and what's going on. Um, so again, hold until uh, someone comes to get it from you and then hold if our line judge or our back judge have um, the spot or have a penalty as well that we need to go report. Um, clean up your sideline, turn your back to the field and watch the players out of bounds and bring them back into the field. Similar thing that we just talked about. Um, there are three officials elsewhere on the field that can keep an eye on things. Most of the time it's out of bounds on your side. It's right in front of you and you're, you're going to have the best view of that um, no matter what's going on. And then assist with open and close and co-rec. So make sure that we're, that if you're the field judge during a co-rec game, we're keeping an eye out for what's open and closed. And we're relaying that and saying that out loud, relaying that to our official, our referee, so they can um, remain aware as to what we're dealing with. Who can tell me what an open play is? <coughs> Open play is where anyone can receive the ball. Okay, perfect. Someone else who can tell me what a closed play is? Yeah, a closed play is where the opposite gender has to receive the ball as opposed to who has the ball left. Okay. Someone besides my man. I like it. Good to hear. What opens the play up after it's been closed? Let's go somewhere over here. No, you all don't count. I appreciate the effort. What, ha what opens the play up? Let's say the previous play of man is going to a man. Okay. Um, and the next one close to get the next play open. A uh, woman would have to throw to a man or a man would have to throw to a woman. Good. Keep that in mind. Be aware of it. That's what our field judge is there for. They're, they're keeping track of that. And we want to, if a play has happened, then we're going to throw our flag. So be aware of it. Understand what's going on. Everyone at all times should have that in their mind. Uh, but our field judge is the one that we want to be focused on it, but again, they need to, they need to relay it to everyone on the field that they're working with what, what we have and what we need um, coming up. So our last judge is our back, our last position is our back judge. They're gonna be back, the deepest person on the field, uh, and they should remain that at all times. 
you should not get beat to this goal line. What we don't want is a player to be down here and you're all the way back there. So if you should be the deepest player on the field at all times if you're right back judge. Within reason, sometimes you will get the random team that everyone will be there and they'll have a random safety right there. I don't need you back there way out of the play. But if the play goes long and they're running the goal line and you're still up here, that's not what we want. That's not what we need because uh, our back judge is Exactly that. They are in the back of the field, um, moving with the play down the field as it goes. So, what we're looking for, we're watching our receivers as they're coming off the line of scrimmage and going deep in position opposite of the line judge. They're taking their first step. Your first step is back. So the first thing you need to do is when you see that ball stop, snap, you need to go backwards and then assess what's going to happen. If the ball is now running to your side, don't take off running forward with it. Stay kind of where you're at. If, the, if you take a step back, and you notice that all the players are coming at you, you probably need to get deep because they're going long. So um, read the situation when you take that step back to figure out what's going on. Read the QB to see where the play may go. Most of our quarterbacks are not looking off safeties as they're, play as they're back there. So if you will see them get the ball and they will look probably exactly where they're going. So look at the quarterback. You might have a better idea. It'll also tell you if it's a run or a pass play. And that's important as well. If it's a pass play, like I said, you'll know that, hey, I might need to get long. If it's a run play, you know that it's probably going to stand in front of you to keep an eye out for the area around you. And obviously, if the running back comes blazing down your sideline, start running with the running back. Um, and again, remember our pass interference restrictions. Offense is at the snap. Defense is, is when the ball is in the air. So we're going to hold, hold our end of the run if, the, if it comes to us. If it's a long play, um, we're going to hold it because we're the first person there. We're the closest one to that situation. And we're going to give it off to our line judge or our field judge. Unless, especially if we have a penalty, we want them to take it from us so we can go report our penalty. Again, clean up sidelines. We're going to act as a windshield wiper and move from side to side. You aren't stuck necessarily in the middle of the field, even though that's where your initial spot is, and help your partners with his or her sideline. So what we're looking for, if a ball goes out here and our players are all over there, we want you to come over as well to help clean up that sideline with our field judge. The more people, more people we have over there, the better it is. Uh, the more eyes we have and the more of a presence we have. Uh, if officials know someone is watching and know someone is around them that will penalize them, the players will clean up their act. So if, if it goes out of bounds here and no one's there, most likely that's where you get the situation. But if we have two players here and we're saying, you know, easy up, let's go, let's get the ball back in, they know that if you're there, you're probably going to avoid that push, that shove, uh, that curse word, whatever it may be um, that may come. So essentially, as plays are going out on the sideline, we want you to run on the sideline, the sideline to come help clean up that play, get the players back on the field, hopefully without incident. Not always the case, but the likelihood is there. And again, assisting with open and closed on Corec, we're relaying that to our field judge, we're relaying that to the rest of the crew, making sure that we're aware um, should uh, that situation arise. So that was that point in a nutshell. Um, as you see, the play moves downfield. The, ref, the back judge stays out of the shot for the majority of this because that's where they are. They are the deep person on the field. Um, most situations, they will stay out of the shot, especially on a run like this. Our field judge and our line judge should be moving up field with the ball as it goes, especially you see our field judges across the field. And you can see our back judges come down. They're there. They have a presence as the play kind of ends. Um, and that's what we want. We don't want our back judge, even though they're, like I said, they're, they're back out the play. They're not always in the action. We don't want them just standing out there the entire time, not talking to anyone, not dealing with any situations. If plays are coming downfield, step into the action, get involved um, with it as well. And I believe our back judges keep the clock, correct? Yes. Yep. So the back judge is also responsible for the clock. So you'll get a wristwatch, which I don't know if we have one in here. Yes, we do. You'll get a little watch that looks like this. Bless you. Um, and you will keep the clock on this, and you will be responsible for announcing out times as we have throughout the evening. So what we shouldn't have is all of a sudden we start the clock, we get to the end of the game, and we haven't had a single, or we get to the end of the half, and we haven't had a single announcement of how much time is left in the half. What I've always done, and what I always tell people to do, is to announce every, ha every half of a half. So if our halves are 20 minutes, 
We need to announce at 10, we need to announce at 5, we need to announce at 3, 2, and then under 2 minutes we should be announcing every time we have a dead ball. So it should be a minute 45, a minute 30, a minute 26, whatever it is. We want to make sure that we're quick on it so people know where we're at in the game, but don't go the whole game without announcing anything. That's part of announcing your presence, making your presence is announcing times that you have on your, um, your watch. So you can see with our positioning, sack in the backfield, our referee grabs it. It was a, everyone has transitioned downfield and he has held it until someone has come to get it and we missed the guy <laughs> behind him that's there to help him out. But making sure we're holding that spot, we're not just running away and um, forgetting about it. Goal line positioning. So teams will get hopefully near the end zone at some point this year. So we need to line up, we need to know how we line up on the goal line. <laughs> Look, I tell you that you you will see some teams that will struggle to get to the goal line. I promise. But most of our teams, I'm sure, will do great. So our goal line positioning will look something like this. Here's our goal line. Our offense is in red. Our defense is in green. Our referee will keep their 7-7 seven and seven like they normally would to our quarterback. Line judge is on the line of scrimmage. Our field judge is here on our goal line. Our back judge will have the end line. A big piece, there's four of you on the field. A big piece of this is that you all communicate with the rest of your crew. So our back judge in this situation is to say, my, my end line, my end line. So that way everyone knows the back judge is responsible for this end line. They got it, they're there, they're ready to roll. Get to the end line, announce it. Our field judge in this situation should say, my goal line, my goal line. Our line judge could also say that, because they're within about a yard on the, based on this picture. So they can also say, my goal line, my goal line. And our referee is just hanging out, announcing our play. Our, our zone line to gain, which is our end zone, um, as well as the down that we're at. So, communicate with each other. It will solve a lot of issues that you may run into out on the field. As you can see, this sideline is the responsibility of our line judge, our field judge is this sideline, and our back judge is responsible for the end line. That's not to say we can't have someone help out. Ball's coming to this corner. Our back judge should close down, but our field judge can also come up and kind of help him out. That's where we need to communicate. Because we want to see, one, did, he get the, did they get their feet in right here and right there? So you're looking at each other, nodding yes, and then someone's going to give us a signal. So we need to work together to hopefully have a smooth operation. Because if not, if you remember a couple years ago at the replacement refs, one ref will signal one thing and the other will signal another. One will go like this, and one will go like this. And now we've got two officials saying contrasting things. and. No matter what you decide, no matter if it was right or wrong, one team is going to be upset because they're going to say, that one said that, and this person said another thing. So work together. Don't be too quick um, to give a signal, uh, especially in a situation where we may have some overlap on our responsibilities. So the ball is snapped. You can see our players are moving. Our, line, our back judge has moved over to the outside, and our line judge is right there to help us. So our back judge, you're not tied to one spot on that back line. You should be moving where you see the ball moving. If you see the quarterback moving that way, the ball's probably going that way. Start to shift that way. So our referee, we're, we're maintaining our same 7-7 seven and seven distance. Uh, we're worried about the backfield and the line of play as the line judge leaves at the snap. So in a situation where we're under, I believe, 10 yards is how we do it. Um, yeah, 10 yards and in, we're going to slide toward the goal, stay in front of the play, and 7 yards and in, we're going to the goal line at the snap, because most likely our play is going to get there and get there quick. So we want to get there and then work back. So you'll get down to the, the goal line, all right, it's not, it hasn't come yet, you'll work backwards, kind of have the ball and go down the field with the ball. Um, and then we're going to mirror our, mirror our touchdown to the sideline after the score. So we have a touchdown, our line judges say, yeah, touchdown. We're going to then turn to the sideline, touchdown. That way we are clear. The referee is the ultimate authority, I guess in a sense, um, on the field. So they are essentially, after a touchdown, they are the one that has to confirm that touchdown took place. Our field judge is our goal line primary, all but three or four yards directly in front of the line judge. Um, and you're starting on your sideline. And um, you're starting on the sideline at the play is 12 yards or further out, wait at your normal starting position and then get to the goal line. So if we're, say, 12 and out, say we're on like the 20, you're not going to start the goal line. You'll start, again, 10 to 15 yards downfield, and then you'll shift to the goal line, as that's where the play is most likely headed. Um, and then our back judge, you're starting on the back end line. 
You will have a catch or no catch in the corners. Like I was saying, communicate with your partners. You won't have, be able to see it perfectly. You may, you may, but not always. So be able to communicate with your partners to relay that information should we have a close call in the corner of the end zone. And then move along the back line to get the best angle. What I shouldn't see if I'm out there, or Andy or Zach or one of our staff members are out there, and the ball has gone to that side of the end zone, and you're still standing right here, and you're like, if you see the ball going that way, go that way with the ball. The more eyes we have in the area, the better it'll be, the more convincing we are. It looks a lot better if the play's right here, and I'm like, touchdown, than if the play's all the way over there, and I'm like, touchdown. <laughs> it looks a lot better. Part of it is selling your call. That's a huge, huge responsibility in officiating is selling what you have, and the best way to do that is to be close to the action um, if we can help it. So reverse goal line positioning. We have a situation where our offense is backed up to their goal line right here. So they're backed up. We have a situation where we may have a safety. So we need to keep an eye out where that goal line is, where the ball is, um, if that's coming out. So our referee is going to take the end line. Our 7-7, seven and seven, we'll put them on that end line. Our line judge has their sign on the line of scrimmage. Our field judge has a line to gain, which is a 20. And our back judge is deep uh, behind the safety um, in this situation. So the ball is snapped. You can see our line judge shifts down to the goal line. Shout out to this receiver. They got it out of there. But you can see our line judge shifts down to the goal line to get that goal line because our, our referee has the back line. And then they shift back upfield as the ball goes away. So referee is at the goal line if it's snapped between the 10 and the 15. Or at the end line if it's snapped within the 10 yard line. We need to keep an eye out of that back of the end zone because we could have a player run out of the back of the end zone. We could have a snap that goes out of the back of the end zone. So we need to keep an eye out again. If the, end, if the back line's back there, and I'm the referee, and I'm like, yeah, I think he stepped out, it looks a lot better if I'm now on that end line saying, yeah, I, th I know they stepped out. Um, so that's why we get to the end line. We want to keep an eye out. And we should be behind the quarterback. And if the quarterback is behind you in a situation like that, then they're most likely out of bounds because you should be on the end line. So keep an eye out for that um, with it. Our line judge is, on, is goal line inside the 10 yards, and we're going to move to it at the snap and then work back to the field. So we see that snap. Get to the goal line so we know where the ball is, and then we'll work up the rest of the field um, if the ball is clear. Our field judge, you're going to help us spot downfield because our line judge is most likely out of the, is a decent distance out of the play due to having you get to the goal line. So we're going to help with our spots, and we're going to keep an eye out for our zone line to gain. We're the primary to see if they cross that. You'll cover more of the middle of the field to assist with modified position of the line judge because our line judge is now working more towards the backfield. Uh, we're keep, you're helping kind of make up that extra space that they've, made up, that they've lost. Because what's going to happen is we want our line judge to get to that goal line because if the quarterback's back here scrambling, their main objective should be to get out of the end zone by either running it, throwing whatever it is. But if they get, they get to deflagged. You want to make sure that we know where that ball is. If the ball is over, the, over the, um, the goal line, we need to know that. And similar principle we've talked about. If I'm on the goal line, it looks a lot better than if I'm up here or behind it. So we want to make sure we're getting there, we're staying there until we see the ball is cleared, um, the goal line. And we'll assist the plays. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry. Back judge, we're helping with spots downfield. Again, we've shifted kind of the field back a little bit from where we typically would be. So we want to help with some spots downfield. We'll assist with plays over the middle um, with the modified position of the line judge. Another thing similar to how we do it with where it's a goal line positioning as opposed to reverse, we're announcing my end line, my goal line, whatever that is. So our line judge should say my goal line and our referee should say my, my end line. Um, so make sure we're announcing, make sure we're communicating um, with each other. So goal line responsibility is, is the responsibility of the referee or the line judge. If we have a situation where we, we may be, say, at the 20, and that quarterback is running with chaos in the backfield, our referee should be back with them, getting our 7-7. Seven and, seven. and if our line judge sees that, they should also start to work back because the situation that that quarterback is 20 yards deep, one, they may not be a good quarterback. Two, they're probably getting uh, flagged somewhere back there. We need to keep an eye out for it. And they get a reminder and signals, making sure we're signaling with each other, communicating with each other. Who can show me what a safety looks like? Perfect. Don't do the safety dance, just. <laughs> um, so put your hands up, give us a safety signal. Um, should, they get, should the ball be in the end zone when they get deflagged? So we have a goal line play, as you can see. 
shifts back. We can see our referee shifting back a little bit. They need to get back to the end line. But you can see our line just shifts back, and then everyone starts to work up the field as the ball goes up the field. For punts, so we have our team, our poor teams that can't get near the goal line, so they have to probably punt a decent amount. So for punts, we're going to line up as such. Our referee and our line judge will be close to the, the offense, so our referees are normal 7-7. Seven and seven. Our line judge is on the line of scrimmage. Our field judge is going to move downfield, so that way most likely the punt, not all situations, but the punt is probably going a little bit deeper uh, than most passes. So we want to go back, and then our back judge should be back where the deepest person is um, for the receiving team on the punt. So you see the ball is kicked. Our line judge then moves on field. Our back judge will have a bean bag, which I don't know if we have one of this. What? Nah, don't worry about it. So our back judge will have a bean bag. It's blue. That's why it's blue square on this. You'll have that. You will drop it where the kick ends. So where the kick end is where the ball has been touched um, by other teams. So we're going to drop our blue bean bag to signal that the kick is over and to where that spot was, um, which will come in play. Uh, and we'll talk about that later. So that spot is going to be important. So make sure that we're getting that as accurate as possible. And as the ball moves downfield, everyone will shift as well. The referee, when the ball is kicked, should not take off all the way down here until the play is over. Because essentially what happens is if this player breaks a return, the referee now has to get down field with that as everyone else shifts up field. Um, so we should keep our same splits as we're moving um, up the field. So our referee don't just take off and expect the play to get blown down here because now you just ran this way and you're going to have to run all the way back this way um, for that. And then you can see our line judge moves up field as the play is ended. Our referee picks the pucks. Our back judge picks up their beanbag, and then we just flip the field. Ta-da. I mean, these are world-class animations right here. Shout out to Andy for doing that. That's how we flip the field on a punt. So our referee is announcing to both teams. So the, the teams had to tell you if they're going to punt or if they're going to go for it. They can't run a fake. So you have to say, red team, are you going to punt or are you going to go for it? They'll say, oh, we're going to punt. You will then say, fourth down, 20 of the game, red is elected to punt. They have to punt. They cannot run a fake. You're going to rule on the snap and the kick, and then after the punt, you're going to go spot the kick, um, and you're going to be used if the kick goes out of bounds, and we'll talk about that here in a second. There's a lovely video. Um, but the referee is responsible if the kick goes out of bounds and helping spot that. Our line judge is going to stay on the line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked. Who knows the rule with punting and why that is? Can anyone tell me? John, what? Yep, perfect. So on a punt, neither team can pass line of scrimmage. The defense can't rush the kicker, so most likely all the defense will go back downfield to catch the kick, and the offense can't cross line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked. So we need to be aware of that, and we're, we're going to flag that should we see it. Um, so our line is responsible for making sure no one crosses either way. If someone snaps it and you see them take like a step, let them know, hey, hey, you know, blue 20, can you make sure you stay till the ball is kicked? Don't flag it right away, especially week one. But if you see it snapped and the guy takes like three steps and then they're like, oh no, let's flag it, let's get them to learn. Uh, how about I understand? But if you get that like kind of like quick step and then they realize what they did, let's have a conversation first um, rather than getting them in trouble off the bat. Our field judge, your sideline, ahead of the pack of receivers. So again, you're in the, essentially, if everyone's lined up deep, you want to be kind of um, in the front of it. Once the kick is caught, beam back the spot and officiate your play from the sideline. Uh, blockers and punts on your third of the field. So if we're looking at this, our field is one, two, three. One, two, three. So our field judge essentially is this third if the punt goes that way. And our back judge on your sideline, the same as the line judge, once the kick is caught, beanbag the spot and follow the play up the middle of the field. Uh, blockers and punts on your two-thirds of the field are your responsibility, and you should be parallel to the deepest receiver, rule on a muff kick. Who can tell me what a muff kick is? Muff kick is whenever someone drops the kick off. Perfect. So they drop the punt, what happens in that situation? Nope. Similar to fumbles, what happens in a fumble in flag football? Ball is down right there. Ball is dead, so we want to make sure we're getting it. So if someone, if the ball hits me in the chest and then goes to the ground, the ball is dead where the ball hits the ground. Make sure you're aware of where the balls hit the ground 
uh, that if it made contact with someone. Because um, we need to make sure we blow that dead. Because what will happen is, people have seen it on Sundays where they get to pick it up and run the rest of the way. It's not how it works in flag football. So make sure we're blowing that play dead uh, should that happen. Here's a punt play. <laughs> Matt Twigger on the announcing. <laughs> yes. Sir. Is there someone on it? No, but we have these people here, so. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. So we have a punt. One thing if we're for this official right here, let them know, hey, yellow, make sure you don't cross the line of scrimmage. Blue, make sure you don't cross the line of scrimmage so the ball's kicked. Give them, give them help, be there to speak with them, um, rather than getting them in trouble. Ball's kicked, it's caught, we drop our bean bag, play moves upfield as well as our officials. And we're there to officiate the end of the play. If a punt goes out of bounds, the referee will go to the spot where the ball is kicked. So if the ball has been kicked where this drain is, I will go to the spot. I will stand here. The line judge and field judge will go beyond where he or she thought it went out and walk back towards the referee. So. I will show you here in a second. Once the referee lines up uh, with the, the line judge and field judge, where, where the line judge and field judge, where he, he or she has the ball going out of bounds, they will chop in the line judge and field judge, and they will stop that spot. So if we're looking at our image. Punt comes from this X, and goes out there. What will happen is the referee will stop there. The line judge will run beyond, and then start walking back. They'll hold their arm up like this as they're walking back to the spot. Once I know that, hey, that's where it went out of bounds. If I'm the referee, I'm going, to chop in the, I'm going to chop him in to tell him that's what it is to stop. That's where we're going to spot the ball. So make sure we're looking for that if we're the referee of is the ball going out of bounds? I need, I'm going to need to rule on that. So make sure that we're watching or aware of what's going on in case we need to jump in and get that out of bounds spot. That's if it goes out of bounds in the air. If it's bounced and rolled out, hopefully our line judge and our field judge are paying attention enough to see that's where it is and we'll move up field with them. Or we'll move up field and grab that spot where it's going out of bounds. So here's an example. It's like a game from like 2002 probably. You can see our line judge, or our field judge has moved to the field. At some point, the referee has chopped them in, they've stopped, and that's where they're gonna spot the ball. So, what's wrong with this situation? Based on the officials. Is that the field judge or the line judge? Uh, let's call him the line judge. The line judge. What is he doing that I just talked to you all about doing if players run out of bounds? He's not standing on the line. Yep. Look at this. I got three players all behind his back. Four players all behind his back. So, what's up? So you want you want to essentially follow them off the field. You want to keep eyes on them at all times. So they're all behind him, and he's looking like this. Now, obviously, we want to grab that spot, but we want to also hold. We can hold our foot and turn and see where they're at. What we don't want to do is have one of them push someone else on that sideline. And if our other officials aren't paying attention, we're going to miss it. All right, we have three officials that should be paying attention to the field of play. Play goes out behind us, we should be paying attention to that because we're right there, we have the closest spot. So as we're, so we get our spot, we want to make sure we turn and look to see what we got going on. Bring them back onto the field. Don't, don't turn and be like, oh yeah, they're good, and then turn back to the field. Follow them back out to the field, make sure they get back. Like I said, use your voice. Our back judge can come across and help out, make sure they come back on the field as well. Work together as a team, it's a huge part of officiating. Any questions about positioning? 
So you all are perfect on positioning. No. <laughs> What's up? Have to do it first. All right. So I have stations. I'm going to break you all into two groups to do your stations. Um, so I'm going to start off. I'll go. Ooh. All right, still working, I think. 